everybody, however many four, maybe five viewers or so that we actually have. Uh, I thought it was a thousand. Yeah. Well, I invited a thousand. However, oh, okay. However many people oh, actually okay. show up. Actually, there oh, were oh, something okay. like uh, 30 to 40-ish people um, clicked and said that they would be uh, they would be watching today. So we Thank will, you for watching. We will see how many people will actually be watching. But um, first off, let me say that uh, uh, I'm Tony Armour, Tony Armour, co-founder, executive director of the Sunscreen Film Festival, and I uh, have some special guests with me today for our second video podcast, our second live video podcast. Uh, we have uh, filmmakers, uh, Stan Arthur, Hi. Tom Thompson, and Scott Bruce. A uh, little bit of information for those of you who may or may not know too much about the Sunscreen Film Festival. We have our eighth annual film festival coming up this April. Uh, we've been around now, obviously, for eight years. And in that time, we've, uh, we've been able to do a lot of uh, really cool things, have some great guests, some great films, and are starting to do some fun things like these podcasts. We do a lot of educational workshops, a lot of educational programming. One of the big things that we like to do is support local filmmakers and Florida filmmakers, and being based here in uh, Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Florida, the Tampa Bay area, these are some local filmmakers, and we want to support them today and talk a little bit about what they've going on. Uh, first off, if you have any questions or anything after the podcast is over, feel free to email us at info, I-N-F-O, at sunscreenfilmfestival.com. Find us online at sunscreenfilmfestival.com, and you can check out our Sunscreen Film Festival Facebook page as well. And our Twitter is uh, at sunscreenfm. So to get started today, we have uh, these filmmakers here, and they have actually just made a new documentary film, uh, Making Waste, How One Man Made a Movie and Ruined His Life. <laughs> this is the man that, that his life has been ruined by... Uh, <laughs> By making a film, basically. The, uh, the laughing that you hear in the background is our, our uh, broadcaster, sound engineer, uh, video camera operator, and resident superhero, who you'll, uh, you'll get to see in a little bit here. Uh, so first off, um, why don't you guys tell me a little bit about um, what is How One Man Made a Movie and Ruined His Life? That's Dan. Uh, well, in 2005, uh, Tom here came up with the idea that he was going to shoot a feature film. He had a very successful career. As a commercial producer, uh, director, uh, doing very, very well, extremely well in his business, and <laughs> and uh, decided to throw all of that away and make a feature film uh, that he thought would be both rewarding and challenging. And it ended up being uh, a money pit and took everything that he'd ever worked for, and that he lo lost everything. Is basically now his house is in foreclosure, can't get a job, hasn't worked in how long? Well. Yeah, little Years. day jobs and stuff, like, you know, little, little day worker stuff and all that. Yeah. But, but uh, no, uh, it, it's been a rough, it's been a rough few years. And Waste of Space is his film that he made a sci-fi comedy. Um, it's never been finished. No, never been finished to this day. Uh, in fact, when he got in the car with me this morning to drive over, drive over here, he said I was really psyched last night and stayed up late because I was working on Waste of Space. <laughs> and I almost cried. Uh, I just, with laughter, you know, just, just it, at this point, it's just become ridiculous. So, so the bottom line is we have uh, Tom who has made a, a, a sci-fi comedy film called Waste of Space, and it's been seven years running now that the film is still not finished, and you basically, you know, career and all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. have gone into the toilet. Because of because of this movie, and so now there's a documentary about about that whole thing. And, yeah. And the documentary about you making the movie was done much quicker than. Um, than this I actually movie. bet these guys that I could get finished with Waste of Space before they would finish their documentary, and uh, I lost. He lost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Waste of Space is almost done. I mean, I might have said that before a few times, but I really mean it this time, you know. And well, fixed, not just done, but fixed. Well. <laughs> I guess the, the obvious question any of our viewers may have is, what's the hold of? Um, <laughs> I think an obsession, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you realize, once you shoot it, you realize, wow, this isn't as good as I thought it was, and, and so you try to fix it in post and realize you can't always do that, and so you make the best decisions you can, and unfortunately, especially in sci-fi, and in this case, we had to ADR almost the entire movie, and so... The ADR, the voice track's been laid on... For those people that may not know, uh, ADR is... Audio dialogue replacement, where the, you know, the actor has to lip-sync themselves to whatever clip you show them. And so, once they do that, you can't choose a different clip to use because it won't sync up. So, um, the combination of that and then all the compositing and everything else that's been done 
All I can do is use the original rough cut edit from six years ago <laughs> and try to rearrange that into something that's good. Well, so, well Scott, there. Scott, you talked a little bit about your involvement in um, Waste of Space and the, the documentary about how Waste of Space ruined this man's life. Well, um, I had the benefit of kind of being in it from the very beginning. Uh, Tom hired me to... Is that a benefit? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes not. But, um, so I was hired as the camera operator for Waste of Space, uh, not knowing very much about that myself and being inexperienced at the time, along with pretty much a lot of the other crew who just kind of were winging it a lot of the times. But So I've seen this whole process from the beginning up until now and all of the years in between and have donated a lot of my time to trying to help him to finish it and it, as we were talking about the documentary I mean it, even when that, when the idea first came out we realized what a great story it was of, of his of his journey I mean it really is I, I think if, if you go to film festivals and stuff or if you follow filmmaking you see a lot of stories about you know people uh, fighting the odds and overcoming obstacles and finishing the project and having some degrees of success. And this was kind of the story of somebody who just absolutely failed. And <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, God. Uh, but but you know to give him credit, uh, didn't accept the failure and to this very day is still going trying to finish it, largely in part so that he can uh, hopefully. Uh, sell some DVDs of this movie and, and pay back the investors uh, well, for the movie. That's, that's an interesting, actually, really interesting, interesting point. There is that you know you have all these you know inspirational stories that you always hear is you know I, they made a movie for for five thousand dollars and made a hundred million dollars at the box office and what a you know what a great thing da, da, da. and then you always hear about those stories but the stories you don't hear about you you kind of taken the opposite twist is how about the guy who sunk his life savings in a movie and it didn't work out. Yeah, right. the failure. Yeah. The, the, the opposite of, you know, all those... Uh, Which are there more of? <laughs> I, I would guarantee that there are more Tom Thompson uh, oh, stories yeah. than, than there are on the others. And so, wow. essentially... So this would be a good, know, relatable movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This, is, this is a film, yeah. I think, that, like you said, uh, will be more relatable to people because that's what people are actually struggling with out there. And, you know, maybe you can actually give people a little bit of hope that, you know, maybe if I keep plugging along... Right. You know, something, something good, something good can happen. So, I, so I guess what what is going on now? The the documentary is finished. Wait, waste of space finished. is almost, almost finished. Almost finished. So, what what is it that you guys are now doing with uh, with the film? You have a Kickstarter uh, thing you're doing for the documentary. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about that. We do. We started a Kickstarter campaign at Kickstarter.com. If you're not familiar with it, it's where people go uh, to get funding for their their projects. There's a lot of musicians, artists, uh, filmmakers, a lot of different kinds of things. You can pick and choose uh, projects that you might want to invest in, and there's always rewards given for your for your investment. Of different Actually, things. technically, it's a donation. A donation. The uh, federal government will not allow investment. It's a right, right. right. But it is a, it is a donation. All right, let's take that. Let's get these get these, but it's a donation, and um, we started one of these uh, with a, a modest goal of a thousand dollars to be able to produce materials that we could then send to film festivals and also to pay for the uh, submission fees to film festivals. So we set this modest goal of a thousand dollars, wanting to raise a lot more in order to be able to send uh, the filmmakers, we and Scott and me out to film festivals that this may get accepted to, to be able to represent and be able to promote that. Now the whole bottom line of this whole thing is by drawing attention to our film, Making Waste, people are going to want to see Waste of Space, Tom's movie, which is going to go a long way towards helping Tom get out of the, the hole that he's dug himself Hopefully. into. So that's that's the whole point of this thing, it's why we did it, and it's, it's, it's our whole angle for trying to to raise funds to, to get our movie into film festivals, get people to see it, and then hopefully people will be attracted uh, to see Tom's film. Sure. And the big, the big thing that a lot of people may not realize about film festivals is when you send your movie to a film festival, you have to pay the film festival Absolutely. to submit your film. These and fees can range anywhere from like $25 up to 100 yeah. even more than that in some of these film festivals. And, it, and, it, and it, depends, it depends on the film festival, obviously. But the reason the film festival charges money, one, is because if you didn't, you would get thousands and thousands of films submitted to you, and you wouldn't be able to screen them all and view them all and decide which one to play at the film festival. 
And another thing is, is because most film festivals, like Sunscreen, are nonprofits, um, you use that as a way to generate revenue to make the film festival happen every year. So, you know, if these guys want to be able to send this film to Slam Dance or Tribeca or Sundance or wherever else, you know, they're going to have to pay an average of 50 bucks every time they submit it. So, you know, if they have $1,000 raised, they're only going to be able to submit it to 20 film festivals, if my math is right. Is that, is that correct? Well, we also so have to make DVDs and HD cam DVDs tapes and all <laughs> materials, press kits, Absolutely. all, of, all a lot of A lot of things that are involved with it. So, so, so the, whole, the whole goal of the Kickstarter campaign is to be able to raise funds to take this finished film and to send it out to and be able to send it out to film festivals around, uh, around the world. Good. Good. Right. And, and, so, okay. and, so, and so now, and now, now, well, let's get to Waste of Space. So the documentary is about, about you failing at making this movie. We <laughs> want a, we want a positive, we want a positive, positive. we want a positive ending to this. I, I want to say to Kickstarter. For yeah, yeah, let's go back to Kickstarter. Let's I want to say something. I want sure. to say something. Keep, keep saying failure, but it's, <laughs> only, it's only a failure in one respect, and that is... <laughs> That it's never been picked up, distributed, or whatever, because it's never been completed. There is a movie. Yes. He has a movie. Yeah. He succeeded in making a movie. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I've really succeeded at so far is not giving up. So, <laughs> but, but at least there's a silver lining. Go ahead, Scott. Okay. Well, uh, in regards to Kickstarter, I just wanted to say that we have reached our goal. We reached it in two days, uh, and I think now this is day three. Yeah. And we're at. Uh, $1,677 or something like that. So this is amazing, and we just wanted to say thank you to all you people out there that uh, donated to us. It's very humbling, and we're very grateful, and we're going to be able to get this thing off the ground and into a bunch of festivals now. Um, but to add to that, we are still looking for more money so that we can pay for travel expenses for Stan and I and Tom to get out to some of these film festivals so that we can represent it even more. So. And, and in return, what they get by donating is they get a, a copy of the film on DVD. They get, what, do they, what do they get if they're going to donate to the uh, to the film? Well, I think there's different stuff. Isn't it? Like you get credits in both Waste of Space and you guys' movie. Um, they get copies of the movie. Um, I think at $200 oh. you get an executive producer credit in Making Waste, the documentary. At three hundred, you get everything else plus oh, prop, a prop, right? You get a props prop or wardrobe from, from waste from and space. space that was used, and then I, I think the top one was like four hundred bucks, and that's where you can have me and these guys come to your house and watch both movies. And, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll give you, I'll give you my macaroni and cheese recipe. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't have to be anything that high, as low as was ten dollars. You get, yeah. you get a, a dollar. You know, you well, get, ten dollars is the first. Reward. Ten dollars is the first reward where you get a, a digital copy of the film. Where you digital download, download of both films. Both yeah. films. Both. That's Just uh, for ten bucks. That's what a bargain. That's pretty. That's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so, that, so then, um, so waste of space. So, how, how close realistically are you? You know, the documentary is <laughs> done. The documentary is done, and the idea, like you said, is people are going to see this documentary, and as soon as they're done watching this thirty-minute documentary, the first thing in their mind is like. And now I have to see Waste of Space. Absolutely. I have to see the movie that spawned this documentary. Are they going to be able to see Waste of Space? Yes. Um, basically, I've taken a list of what all the distributors told me was wrong with the movie. <laughs> and then I put that in at my editing station. And so what I've tried to do is go back and address all of those mm -hmm. things. And as of right now, uh, I broke the movie in half, which is a way to move stuff around as well as it wasn't this mountain. It became two molehills. Mm -hmm. So um, I, the first half is 99% complete. The second half is about 87% complete. So if you figure it all together, I think I have about three or four weeks, and I'll be able to invite a bunch of people to say, come watch this and tell me what you think. Sure. You know? So... We um, when the, when Scott was asking me for Kickstarter, he goes, "Well, we have to tell these people when they can get their stuff." So I said, um, "Well, September." And, and Scott says, "Okay, we'll put it down for October." <laughs> so <laughs> it'll definitely be ready by October. So good, very good. So so basically, you know, as this is as as making waste is going to go out to the film festival circuit, you're going to be wrapping this up as you're submitting the film. Because generally, if you submit, yeah. you're, if you're submitting to a film festival now. For example, uh, Sunscreen is going to open submissions right around September 1st, mm -hmm. but the festival doesn't happen until April. I mean, right. because we need from September through uh, January, February to watch all the movies all that come in and figure out what's you know of the hundreds of movies that come in, you got to figure out what 
50 or 60 are going to be. Yeah, you guys have targeted festival. up the, the winter, spring, you know, so from yeah. January through May is kind of when those festivals happen. Yeah. But you have to start entering like right now. You have to enter, so. you have to enter now for the winter, spring yeah. of, of 2013, basically. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. The point is. Well, good. Well, good. Was well, there anything else you guys would like to tell us about about waste of space, about making waste, how one man made a movie and ruined his life? Um, I want to say these guys are really good filmmakers, and, and the reason I say that is I was watching Making Waste yesterday with a friend of mine, and um, the the comments that person made, who looked at it from the outside, was going, "A, this is really good. B, um, it's really funny and touching at the same time." And, and asked me, and the person looked at me and said, how did you do that? Well, I'm not an actor. So I give these guys the credit because, partly because they're friends of mine and I trusted them, I was able to just sort of be myself, I guess, and forget the camera was there. But I was really honest, and the honesty shows in the film, and even though it's embarrassing to me, and I look like an idiot a lot of the time, <laughs> um, it's it's the true story, and it's it's... I guess from what I the input I'm gathering, it's a pretty compelling story. So it was uh, it was really well made. So congratulations, you guys did a great job. Yeah, and I, and I have to and I have to say that I've I've seen it as well. And it was one of the things that you know, as as someone who has run a film festival for eight years now, I watch a lot of movies. I see a lot of documentaries and a lot of things that are sent in. I mean, literally thousands that have been submitted to the film festival over the years. And this is this is something that is is as good as any you know documentary that we've had. It, it really is very, it is it is touching and it's funny and it's emotional and the stuff that you guys are able to pull out of Tom is the honesty and, you know, the real the real life where you can tell he's not, you know, acting for the camera. Yeah, that, it wasn't you know. just the story, it was how I felt about the story right. and so, and that was what I was surprised to see yeah. and it, but it was great, it really was good. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to having you guys submit it to, uh, to sunscreen. Yeah. Um, you know, a little bit of an inside track. Uh, it seems, seems like. So, At least you have some awareness. Are good. I, I can't make any promises. Now I'm not making any promises to any filmmakers. But, but, thing, but, thing, but things are, uh, are, are looking pretty good. So now while I have you guys here, uh, something else that we do with the, uh, with the podcast is we just talk about uh, film news in general and things going on in the film and the entertainment world. And um, you guys might as well join in with, uh, with some of the discussions today. We do have, I'd also like to introduce... Uh, superhero here as well. Now, super Dale Popel. Dale Popel, superhero. I don't know if we're supposed to give out his real name on camera. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. But you just outed him. I, I think I think we did. <clears throat> but he was actually a cast member in Waste of Space, yeah. the, uh, the original. Seek film. the space pirate. Seek the got space it. pirate. <laughs> so uh, I was still got the shirt, and I've still got the. Actually, let me see if I can see get. If you can show that to the camera. I can show this to the camera here without. Get a little closer. There you go. There's me on the uh, right, my buddy Maddie, Shalita Boxy, and my buddy Dave. And we'll do it for this camera too. Whoop, I just bumped the mic, sorry. We'll do it for this camera too as well, right there. And I still have one of the props with me. I kept it because I know one day this thing is going to break big. Well, I know it is. Plus, you're lucky because one of the rewards for the Kickstarter thing was some signed. Props right. and wardrobe. Right. So if that was at my house, you I'd be able to sign it and it'd be yeah. gone. Well, do you want me to donate it? it? No, I mean, if, okay. if somebody wants it, then Dale's offered to make it. Somebody, somebody, somebody wants it. Uh, if somebody wants Keep this. in mind, it has not been washed and, and for six years. <laughs> it's not, this, is true. this shirt has not been washed in six years, right. worn by a, uh, or by a real life superhero. Right. <laughs> uh, and if you, if you want this, you're going to have to bid on it. We're gonna we're gonna take bids. You're gonna have you're gonna have to email email info info at sunscreenfilmfestival.com and the highest winning bidder uh, will get this prop from the film signed. We'll have we'll have the filmmaker sign it. We'll have Tom, uh, producer director of Waste of Space and superhero actor from Waste of Space both sign the shirt for it. So start start sending those emails with those bids and, and all the money all the funds will go to. Um, the documentary and you know cool. to the uh, to the Kickstarter bidding starts at one thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, think, I don't think anybody's going to call. <laughs> so, but anyways, let's uh, so let's ch chat a little bit about some some film news. I I made a few notes um, just to start discussing some stuff like we uh, like we usually do. Just some some curiosities. Uh, one, um, 
being film guys, of course, I'm assuming, even if you're not a film guy, most people have seen the, uh, the original Vacation with, uh, with Jeff oh, Chase. Of course. Right? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you guys know that they are going to be making, I think, what is now going to be the fourth or fifth, maybe even it's the sixth, fifth, if you count Christmas Vacation, the really crappy Vegas mm-hmm. Vacation. Vegas Vacation. Vegas Vacation. Vegas Vacation. Yeah. vacation. I want to say four. Christmas Vacation. Is he going to have Chevy Chase again? I, I, I'm not sure on Chevy Chase, but there's one actor that is confirmed for it, Ed Helms. Who we all know from yeah, The right. Office and The Hangover is going to play Rusty Griswold as an adult. Oh. Uh, Randy Quaid kind of went off the deep end there, didn't he? So I don't know if we'll have his I don't know to yeah, I don't brother. Know. brother. Was it brother or uncle? I think. Um, no, no. He, he was the stepbrother. Stepbrother. Yeah. He was. Oh, he, right. he was uh, Chevy Chase's. He was Clark Griswold's wife's. Brother. So it's right. actually for the brother-in-law right. or cousin-in-law. No, he was the, her like wife's that. husband. So yeah. he was brother-in-law. Clark Griswold's wife's, wife's sister's husband. Sister's husband. Right. So he's brother brother-in-law. Or was brother-in-law. it? Or was it cousin's husband? Yeah. Regardless, there's going to be yeah. a new yeah. vacation yeah. film. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As we digress here and to figure out the, <laughs> the, the lineage the of the, Gris, the genealogy of the Griswold <laughs> yeah. fictional Griswold family. Uh, but anyways, Ed Helms. For the uh, for the new vacation, yeah, he'll be good for that. Yeah, I, I, I read that and I thought that that was uh, I thought that was pretty pretty entertaining. Um, uh, some some other things. Wasn't uh, the original Rusty the same kid who grew up and he was in Dead Zone? He was in all the Molly Ringwald movies. Anthony Michael. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Anthony, yeah, he got bit. Yes, Anthony, yeah, Anthony, Anthony Michael Hall, Hall was, that's the, right. was the original Rusty Griswold. Did he just flex? Huh? Are you just flexing just then? No, I just said he got bit. Yeah, sure. Let's give superhero give a flex to the camera. There. Let the kids know out there that he yeah. eat Wheaties. I just said he got big. He did. He was about as big around as my thumb, and then yeah. he showed up in Edward Scissorhands, and people didn't recognize him because he was huge. Well, he, he played probably, the jock. He probably got beat up, you know, after all those sixteen candles. Yeah, and all those yeah. yeah. He decided it was time to hit the weights and. Really change his yeah. life. Yeah, uh, he had his own show for a while there. I think it was uh, Dead, Dead Zone. Zone. Yeah, Dead actually, Zone. actually, a pretty good show. Pretty yeah. good show. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the the big the big question that I'm sure mm-hmm. all of our audience really wants to know is how many people on the panel or in the room here, including Stan, have read Fifty Shades of Grey? No, me. I have not. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be a big zero. <laughs> <laughs> zero. Well, it's it's a hot it's a hot property in Hollywood now. Have you read it? I have not. Uh, but uh, I have been told by females that I should read the book. Mm. And so when women suggest that you should read Fifty Shades of Grey, I suppose at some point uh, I will... Uh, well, when they come out with like sure. a Cliff Notes version or something, <laughs> like a, a pamphlet, you know... That's, <laughs> that's just me getting more excited in the bedroom? Uh, you know, what you're to say? Yeah, I don't know. I guess, uh, I don't know, no comments. <laughs> no, I don't want to indict ourselves. Uh, <laughs> I think you're going to say they're coming out with a movie and using the Sex in the City girls for it or something. I don't know, I don't know. But, uh, so, you know, we're, we're, we're partway through the, uh, through the summer. Um, and, you know, summer, you get summer movies. You get all the big... You know the big superhero movies, everything that's been kind of coming out uh, for the summer and everything here. But there, are, but you know, kind of that next sort of Hollywood thing is uh, Christmas time. You know, right around the holidays, you have you have a good run of films coming out too. Uh, Skyfall, the new James Bond film. Have any of you guys seen? Uh, I haven't seen the trailer yeah, yeah. for that. No. Yeah, yeah I, I saw some behind the scenes video stuff that had been shot, and just the behind the scenes stuff, which is not polished, looked really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. no, it, lo- it looks really good. I'm, I, I really do like uh, Daniel Craig. I, this is, I mean, the, uh, the who's your favorite James Bond topic, you know, sort of yeah. thing. Uh, but I really do like uh, like Daniel Craig as uh, as Bond. I thought yeah. he's, uh, I thought he's done a great job. You know, I found out he's been making a mistake all these years. You're never supposed to shake a martini. Really? I was listening on, yeah, some guy on the radio was actually talking about it, and you're not supposed to, it's, stir is okay, but you're not supposed to shake one. Yeah, he has the chicken. Why do they have martini or... shakers? Aren't those those metal things? Well, you can, you can, I, I went to bartending school. You can, you <laughs> can shake just about anything you want, because you've got the utilities right. to do it right there, the tools, but you're not supposed to shake a martini. That's so, how rebellious he is, though. So, yeah. so, what, yeah. so what we've actually learned in this conversation is not only can you pull cats out of a tree and uh, you know help stranded motorists and things like this. I wrote, if you're going to if you're going to bind, <laughs> yeah. if you're going to bind at your party, <laughs> and, and you need a bartender, you have an official superhero <laughs> bartender that can uh, that can handle it for you, and he can flex like Anthony Michael Hall. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, you know, another uh, another you know thing that was kind of a big hit at uh, at Comic Con, the big Comic Con panel uh, this year was Expendables Two. 
Ooh, uh, yeah. Expendables 2 coming out soon. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. And an in, interesting kind of to, to talk about that topic, um, a lot of things that uh, filmmakers, people around the world, I'm sure most filmmakers know this, is that nowadays 70% of the box office revenues come from international sales. I believe that. So if you're making well, seventy percent, so if you're making a movie nowadays, and just a few years ago, just five years ago, it was like sixty percent. Yeah, it's climbed like seventy yeah, percent. I thought it was fifty. That's how out of touch I am. Yeah, but well, you've been you've been stuck in a little warm <laughs> time warm yeah, yeah. But so, something that I was reading that I was that I was reading is that what Hollywood uh, filmmakers are doing now is that they are actually kind of identifying, you know. What actors are put in their films, basically by what countries are going to be popular. So I'll give you I'll give you a little rundown here for uh, for Expendables two. Uh, you've got uh, Jason Statham, uh, British, who in the U S. he's fairly well known, mm-hmm. but overseas <coughs> overseas he is a legitimate like number one A list action star, right? Really? Oh. Big time, big time action star. I know uh, he wants to take over as Daredevil. Really? Yeah, he's made that very clear. He wanted them to make another Daredevil movie, and he wants to be Daredevil. That's like his favorite comic. But no one's ever moved on that. Interesting. Yeah, but he's repeatedly, I want to be Daredevil, I want to be Daredevil, I want to be Daredevil, and nobody ever well, takes him off. Marvel Studios, if you're watching, yeah. we're getting a little shout-out there for uh, <laughs> Marvel's yeah. probably too. But it's you know, in the 80s, famous. Adam West yeah. wanted to do that. Really? Yeah, he wanted to make Daredevil. He would put so I'll put up the money and shoot the pilot and everything like that. He wanted to be Daredevil. Huh. And everywhere he went, they told him the same. Well, it was late 70s, early 80s. And he, everywhere he went, they said, Adam, we love you. We love everything you do. But who the hell is Daredevil? <laughs> they could have cared less. And that was the end of him doing it. And now, apparently, no one, Jason Stratham can't get it done either. Well, who so, knows? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, and then you've got an Australian, Liam Hemsworth. A uh, Chinese, Jet Li. Um... We've got Scandinavian, Dolph Lundgren, uh-huh. uh, the Belgian, <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Damme, wow. uh, who is still, by the way, is still enormous overseas. You hear Jean-Claude Van Damme, and you're like, oh, uh, cheesy action movies. No, that guy overseas, you slap him, really? slap in a movie, and he will <laughs> kill it. I think he's like the number one superstar in all of Turkey. Get out of here. He's huge in Turkey. He's huge in Turkey. Oh and, and a lot of other countries. He really. He I thought I saw him doing like a Comedy Central roast the other day. It's I mean, very possible. I thought the career was pretty much over when you were doing Comedy Central Well, you know, I think about it. Maybe 30% of his career, which is <laughs> the U.S., yeah. but the remaining 70% of the world, you know. Uh, he's, he's bilingual too, right? I probably try and Quadlingual. Yeah, a lot of people whatever. from Europe are, so he can get out there at premieres and relate. Yeah, that. so yeah, that makes sense. But, you know, I know Dolph speaks a whole different language. And then, and then you know, when you, you throw in there yeah. your, uh, your Bruce Willis, your Sylvester Stallone, and your Arnold Schwarzenegger, and uh, and your 72 year old Chuck Norris. Right. Um, now that's an action movie. And you have the Expendables. <laughs> and you have the Expendables. But, but you know, like I said, the big the big thing that apparently is uh, is going on is that you know the reason that you uh, that you do that kind of diverse selection. It's now you've hit all those countries. You've got a star in all those countries, and you're gonna, you know, if you make a hundred billion dollars in the U.S., you're gonna make four hundred billion overseas. So, so, you know, just kind of. uh, I always heard Dolph was nice to work with. He makes. Well, you know, so you hear the thing about Van Damme where he got, he was on drugs and he was in the hotel room and he busted out all the light sockets. <laughs> they went in there and he's going, the cameras are everywhere. And in there, yeah, that kind of, Dolph doesn't do that. <laughs> Is he on bath salts or something? I don't know. <laughs> Did you know bath salts have a picture of Charlie Sheen on them, like a caricature? <laughs> I swear to God, I saw a pack. They have a, I didn't take them. They have uh <laughs> A caricature of Charlie Sheen on I, 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 I don't know if I've ever... Where do they sell bath salts off at? Uh, gas head stations shop? and stuff. Yeah. 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 Where are yeah. bath salts? There's, you can buy them at a gas station? I, I think so. Think. You can buy that, that fake red weed at a gas station. I think it depends on the location of the gas station. If you're shopping at a gas station, uh, say in Clearwater Beach... You may not find bath salts. I could be wrong. I but it was a street drug. No, if you're, no, no, it's legal. That's the problem. It's, a, it's, yeah, it's legal, legal but they're good. working on making it illegal. Yeah. And yeah. what they keep doing is <coughs> changing the synthetic chemicals in it so that it's. You'd not. think the face eating would have been enough right. to make it illegal. Yeah, and I think the whole thing is: it, are they actually bath salts where you can take a bath yeah. and just sprinkle them in? Yeah, I mean, like, like is it so. or is this? And then, they, and then they just. I think they just call them bath. But salts. people use yeah. it to like smoke it or drink it or not drink it, but. 
to do whatever they can. Like they artificial do. meth or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't that. know how you ingest it. Optional. Well, this a little di- digression in the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like you say, don't use drugs. Yes. Yeah. 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 Stay in school, kids. Stay, right. stay in school. Don't use bath salts, artificial. Anything uh, with Charlie yeah. Sheen's picture. Don't quit your job to make a movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, the Bourne Legacy, new Bourne film. Yeah, that was yeah. weird. Any, any thoughts, opinions on that? Well, from what I, I get, that actor, I think it'll be good. Yeah, but it, it, that part I get, you know, because I think he is good, and I think it'll be all actiony and cool. But the storyline they used to explain why you've got a different guy was pretty flimsy. Yeah, that who's playing? There's now? there's more than one. Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Jeremy, Jeremy Renner. Richard Chamberlain was the original Jason Bourne. Yes, I watched. And if I, watched I remember years ago. correctly, that in the books that it was all based on, Richard people say Richard Chamberlain was actually the most like what the character in the books was supposed. Yeah, to there, be there was like. a there was a there was a 1987 TV movie, The Bourne Identity, starring Richard Chamberlain mm-hmm. and one of the Charlie's Angels, Kate. Oh, uh, no, it was not right. Kate Jackson. Jacqueline Smith. Jacqueline Smith. Jacqueline Smith. Thank Jacqueline Smith. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. And it was interesting because it's, uh, it's, it's, simil- it's, you know, it's similar to the Bourne Identity and the storyline is the same and the character is the same. But, you know, you had Matt Damon uh, and then you had Richard Chamberlain who was, at the time when he filmed it was like in his 50s. Well, think right. about it, too, in the 80s, he could do no wrong. I mean, yeah. he had Shogun, the Thornbirds, he was like the king of the miniseries. Yeah. You know, of course you're going to get Richard Yeah, and Richard Chamberlain uh-huh. in the, the So if anybody wants to look up the original Born Identity, I believe you can find it. It's on, on DVD. I believe yeah. you can find it on Netflix, because I, I got it a while back just for the hell of it. Just How was it? it? Just check it out. It's a 1987 action movie, you know? Mm-hmm. Cool. It's exactly what you would expect a 1987 TV action movie to be, basically. <laughs> Sorry, Richard Chamberlain and Jack Lunsman. Was it cheesier than Waste of Space? <laughs> uh, I'm hoping they end up coming up with like, the You guys are dogging so bad. I'm going to tell you, I was Zeke the Space Pirate on Waste of Space. Not cheesy at all. And that was the most fun I ever had working on any project that I've ever worked on. I mean, he gave us all kinds of creative input. Uh, you'll see in the film and everything, like we all have like a different leather strap that was spirit that was gummed. That was, <laughs> that was genius. That was well, believe it or not, I came up with that. Oh, you came I up with that. He gave us so now much. You're the one I, I came up with <laughs> The aliens all had shaved eyebrows. I came up with this that whole backstory. That's, that's what I was going to say, is I remember that well, you, you and Maddie and Dave. We all, all had shaved, shaved eyebrows. Shaved and we all had, but you see the different, the different <laughs> thing that we had over our eyes. That like me and Dave were supposed to be brothers, so we have the same one. And I came up I with this. I thought that was rank insignia. Well, it was in a way. It was like clans, like right. Scottish okay. clans. That's why Maddie has a different one because he wasn't supposed to be related to <laughs> us. <laughs> But we came up with this big backstory about, you know, the alien culture and how the women on that planet run everything because the men are too stupid and everything like that. And he just, he rolled with it. He, That's great. Do it. He thought, I had more fun working on that film than I have on anything else I've ever worked on. So they're sitting here dogging him, but this guy knows how to let... Things flow. He has a very. True. Ed Wood used to do the same thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, we're right there in the same league with, with Ed Wood. Wood. <laughs> Ed Wood, what people would suggest, and they'd say, "That's great. Let's roll with it." And that well, that was a great film to work on. Now, I mean, now, it'll show through when you see it. Now, how did uh, the, the eyebrow shaving come up? This is turning into Who's a roast, isn't it? Because was, that, was he trying to, to support you? Yeah, he just tricked me into coming to this. <laughs> the, 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 the spirit gum. Well, like, imagine how that would hurt to take us. So I said, just get rid of the eyebrows. And she says, "Really? You want to get?" I said, "Do it. Get rid of the eyebrows. The, we're supposed to look like aliens." Well, you, were, you were the first one to say get rid of the eyebrows. They, they were hardcore. Maddie here. Maddie. It's funny. Uh, I just hung out with Brian Nobbs down in Miami, so that makes this interesting. Brian Nobbs was supposed to play Jeb the Space Pirate, and uh, he backed out at the last minute. He had another commitment or something like that. So I went to Tony and said. We got another guy, he's got experience, and he was a pro wrestler, and it's Matty. 
And we, and we had, we had actually... So I called Maddie up, but Maddie, you can see, he's a little Puerto Rican guy with a big bunch of muscles on him, and he's got real dark eyebrows. Nobody noticed that my eyebrows were missing. Like, I went to work that night and everything, and nobody noticed. Maddie tried sneaking in behind his wife. She was watching TV like this, and she he walked uh, behind her this way very quietly. She didn't even look. She just went... You're never doing anything with superhero again as long as you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, there went the eyebrows so we could spirit gum on these different clan, like almost like a tartan type yeah. thing. But it was all creative input and he allowed it. It was great. See, now, I, now I want to see the film. Just, mm -hmm. just to see you guys with your shaved eyebrows. That, that, that was around. pretty amazing. I mean, That's right, you've never like, seen it, have you? I have not. Even that horrible... Rough cut. We, I haven't seen any well, of them. You weren't there for the rough cut? No, I mean, I was there, but I was busy running around. And I brought this with me there. There's a picture of me, Dave, and yeah. Maddie all holding yeah. the shirt. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, I so said, yeah, I would actually like to see the uh, the finished. So, but, soon to be finished. Well, you will soon. Well. And that was typical of a day on the set of Waste of Space where... Like, I, I believe he like showed up day of the shoot oh, yeah. and had no idea what was yeah. going on. Yeah, this yeah, was right. a last minute right. replacement. And here he comes walking onto the set, and we're like, all right, you know, now we're going to shave your eyebrows. And right. He's like, cool, let's do it. Matt, <laughs> Matt, Matt's a journeyman <laughs> actor. He just, it's pretty amazing. Interesting thing, his character eats jerky throughout the whole film. Yeah. Matty cannot stand jerky. Yeah. <laughs> he was on the verge of vomiting. And it was so bad because we were running out. And, 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 and oh. he would actually, he'd been chewing it for the scene, and we had to cut, reset, take it. He would actually have... Chewed up beef jerky stacks <laughs> all over his pockets because we were running out of jerky, so he had to have some place else. Yeah, yeah, jerky yeah. coming out of like yeah. He's a, he's a journey. He, he did a pilot for me too, and he's a journey. He was a professional wrestler, but you know that's what we call the job <coughs> mentality. Pay me, pay me. You know he shows up right to to do a job. You say you're shaving your eyebrows. Great, let's do it. <laughs> and he's yeah, and he's in there working. That's yeah. just. Yeah, he's, he may be watching us right now. I sent him a link. He's out in Colorado right now. But, uh, yeah, Matty was great in everything that he's done. So we'll have to get him back for something one day. I, I'm, sure we, I'm sure we can find find some way of uh, getting the, putting the band back. Well, now you want to lose. You have to, you'll have to uh, send it to some film festivals in Colorado. Oh, yeah, Matty's so already there. there. You know, yeah, he can I'm represent sure, your, uh, yeah. 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 There's There's some good ones out there. Bale Film Festival and some others that, uh, that, that, would, be, uh, that would definitely... Definitely be fun. Is that during uh, species season? Uh, no, I summer. believe. You know what? I believe that's actually. Like, it already happened. Yeah, summer or September. I think it's like or, in June or something. Mm -hmm. Something like I think that. It just happened. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think they they do that to find something to do in the off ski season. So busy during yeah. ski season, you don't want to necessarily have a unless you're some man who you slap the. Uh, Right how long is the middle. show, by the way? Forty-five minutes, I guess. We're gonna write. We'll write. How, how? Where are we doing there, Stan? Where are we at? Oh, uh, uh, where would that be? Uh... <laughs> well, wait, we started at. Uh, wait, oh, you know what? We're at. We're at. We're at almost thirty-nine minutes. It's, it's, a, it's eleven oh. It's eleven oh eight. We started at about ten thirty. That's so, great. Uh, no commercial breaks. That's nothing. right. We just we just roll through this thing. If you have to take a pee break, you just get up in the middle of the show and just go. Yeah, I'm back in the minute. Yeah, back in the minute. I gotta. I gotta. I just peed myself while I was sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> So any, it was, so you know this is kind of a free form free form topic today. Not a lot of, not a lot of stuff you know uh, specific to what we're doing. Any any other film related film festival related topics that anybody would like to uh, discuss on the podcast today? Hmm. We're generally a little more structured and have more of a more of a list. Oh, but just kind remember of remember we were talking about John Carter the last time we were on here. Yes, we were. You know what else is based on John Carter? I found out. Mm -hmm. Because we were talking about how He-Man was based on John Carter, and what was he, or some of the other things that were based on John Carter. But Avatar, John, John Carter, was based Avatar was based on John Carter. Did you know that? Because John Carter leaves his body on Earth, and he uses magic or whatever, and has another body on Mars. Right, right. Yeah, so... That I found that out. I was telling somebody else at work about Didn't that. Didn't that movie tank like hugely? It, it, John, oh yeah, it tanked big time in the U.S. I think it did a little better overseas, going with that thirty seventy model. Um, and then as as we discussed last week, and I, I don't know why I've discussed this several times on the podcast. I have some strange fascination with this with this film. It was possibly the worst marketing campaign I've ever seen for any oh, it was film it was. ever in the history of mankind. I mean, I said if that's the best they can do with the trailers, and I saw three different trailers. Yeah, I said this movie must be atrocious. Because the trailers were terrible. Well, the, the, I, mean, I didn't get the story. I didn't care about the character. I didn't know about him before. And, and it didn't look like it was 
Good I actually had somebody say to me, why are they making another Terminator? That's stupid. <laughs> what do you mean? They, they, they were, that's how bad the trailers were yeah. that she actually thought, because she was thinking John Carter. She was thinking John Connor. Right. <laughs> and yeah, she's, yeah. But their trailers are such discombobulated yeah. junk yeah. that you could actually get out of it, oh, it's another Terminator. And she was like, why, God, this will be like the fifth Terminator. Why the hell would I go see another Terminator? I think they actually are working on another Terminator. By the oh, way. God. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, that's, you know, yeah. was what she got out of it was even, and that's how bad the trailers were, that you could confuse it with a Terminator movie. Yeah. Well, in the end, so. again. They are making a new Anchorman, though. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. I know. With yeah. Will Ferrell? With yeah, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Yeah, he announced it on uh, Conan O'Brien. He came out as a new cast. In, yeah. in character uh, as uh, as his Anchorman character and yeah. announced uh, announced that. Yeah. There is a, there is a I, you know Will Ferrell was was really funny for a while. It kind of took it a little dip and hopefully it's coming uh, coming back. Well, it's the oversaturation guy. thing. Yeah. You know, he went for the cash. It was right there on the table, and I think he just did whatever to collect it. But now. I think he realizes. Listen, I'm going to do the stuff I really like. Yeah, you know? like I think that the uh, the candidate, the one with him and Zach Galifianakis, that's coming out soon. That looks good. Where they both play political candidates running for the for Senate. Oh, uh, I did see the trailer for that. That, 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 that looks amusing. Yeah. Yeah. Looks amusing. Christina yeah. Applegate. I wonder if she'll come back for the new. I, I don't think she is. I think she's not coming back for the new. The Man, new when we were kids, we ever said Kelly Bundy's going to have an Emmy. <laughs> and think about that for a minute. <laughs> Kelly Bundy's going to have an Emmy. Would we have ever said that when we were kids? That's, that, that's pretty amazing. And I think yeah. actually now she's a big uh, spokesperson for breast cancer because she just yep. she just had breast cancer. Wasn't oh, I didn't know that. Or yeah. Some, yeah. I apologize for getting the cancer wrong. I was always a Peg <laughs> man, though. I like Peg. Peg. Yeah, yeah, I preferred Peg to Kelly. Yes, I know. Yeah, a super superhero here. Uh, just to give a little insight into his uh, his personal life for for those of you that are watching. Uh, superhero actually has a um, uh, a large fascination. I don't know what called the Bard's fascination. He, he likes older women. Let's put it that way. Like so, not so, like you know, like <laughs> driving Miss Daisy or anything. <laughs> uh, no, when I say older women, I mean like ten, like for example, let's uh. Um, <laughs> some, some, of, some of your some of your some of your favorite actors that you've seen recently that you think are still drop dead hot. Close Donna Mills. Mills. Donna Mills. Donna Mills. She did an episode like seventy something. Sixty seven, and she did a, a <laughs> bathing suit scene in uh, Cold Case, and she's a knockout. She's absolutely gorgeous. Donna Mills, if you're watching. Yeah, Donna Mills is still. Well, get Donna Mills for a film. Hey, I'm spoken for. Superhero. Don't worry. Yeah, I got. Would, uh, would Donna? Who would be on Superheroes laminated list? Laminated list? There is a it's, a. it's an old thing from from Friends years and years and years ago, uh, where one of the characters had a a list of five women that he was allowed to cheat on his girlfriend with, and it was laminated. They all have uh, the they all, they all had they all had these little and they're they're like you know people that are obviously unattainable because they're some sort of actor or, or that sort of thing. Kate Kay Segal. Kay Segal. Tina Louise. Tina Louise. Tina Louise. Anne Margaret. The audience who Tina Louise is. Ginger yeah. from. Gilligan's yeah, Island. Gilligan's Island. Uh, so what was it? What was it? It was Nate. You know, made me lose my train of thought there. Peg Bundy, lot. Ginger from Gilligan's Island. Island. Cat, uh, Julie Newmar, Catwoman. The original Catwoman from the 60s Batman. Uh-huh. Uh, and Margaret. <laughs> and Margaret. And Margaret. And now I think I'll throw Donna Mills on there. Donna Mills. Yeah, so there you go. My... All actresses that are 60 plus, except for uh, Peg Bundy. Is yeah. Probably she's, yeah. Yeah. she's in her 50s. 50s. Yeah. yeah. She started out as one of Tina Turner's backup singers. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, she can sing. Oh, oh yeah, she just yeah. she just did a song for that Sons of Anarchy show that she's in. I, you can hear it on YouTube; it's excellent. Very good. Yeah. Well, we're getting close to uh, close to wrapping up here, so I want to say thank you all for our, for for watching and uh, listening to our our ramblings here today about uh, one making waste, how one man made a movie and ruined his life. Find it on Kickstarter. Uh, donate and support the, uh, the film and the filmmakers. Thanks for watching the Sunscreen Film Festival podcast. If you have any questions. Uh, info, I-N-F-O, at sunscreenfilmfestival.com. Our website is sunscreenfilmfestival.com. Find us on Facebook at sunscreenfilmfestival.com and on Twitter at sunscreenff. We're going to have gonna... a hell of a time with the graphics on this when you get it up on YouTube. Yeah, well, we're so going we're to keep this rolling on a weekly basis. Uh, look for it on YouTube. And uh, we do have our audio podcast that is on in that is on iTunes right now. And uh, these video podcasts will be uh, up on iTunes at some point as well. So thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week. So long, folks.